1996, the Nigerian men's football team won gold at the Olympic Games held in Atlanta in the United States. As the final ended, the final game ended, jubilant crowds poured onto the streets of every major city and town in Nigeria. This country of over 200 million people was instantly transformed into a massive celebration at two o'clock in the morning. There was infectious joy, happiness, excitement, as people ate, sang, and danced. Nigeria, in that moment, Nigeria was united, and every Nigerian was content being Nigerian. Before the Olympic Games, this team faced numerous challenges. As the tournament began, their financial support ended. The team competed without proper kits, training venues, food, or laundry services. At one point, they were minutes away from being eliminated from competition, but the Nigerian team triumphed against all odds. This pivotal moment changed how they saw themselves with a newfound confidence and with individual and team hard work and dogged determination, they unitedly ignored distractions and focused on winning. This focus won them gold medals, and Nigerians christened them the dream team. The dream team at the 1996 Olympics continues to be referenced in Nigerian sports. Once the football team learned to ignore the many distractions facing them and focused on their goal, they succeeded beyond what they thought possible and experienced great joy, as did the rest of us in Nigeria. In a similar way, when we ignore the distractions of the world and focus on Christ and his gospel, we are guaranteed success beyond what we can fully imagine and can fully and can feel great joy. President Rusalem Nelson thought, when the focus of our lives is on Jesus Christ and his gospel, we can feel joy regardless of what is happening or not happening in our lives. I pray that the Holy Ghost will help each of us to heed to President Nelson's invitation to focus our lives on Jesus Christ and his gospel so we can experience joy in Christ regardless of what is happening or not happening in our lives. Several accounts in the Book of Mormon describe those who turn their lives around by focusing on Jesus Christ and his gospel. Consider Alma the Younger. He rebelled and fought against the church. His father Alma prayed and fasted. An angel appeared and taught Alma the Younger to repent or repentance. In that moment, Alma began to suffer the pains of a damned soul. In dark hours, he remembered his father's teaching that Christ would come to atone for the sins of the world. As his mind caught hold, focused on this thought, he pled with God for mercy. Joy was a result, a joy he described as exquisite. Mercy and joy came to Alma because he and his father focused on the Savior. For parents who have children who have strayed, take heart. Instead of wondering why an angel does not come to help you, your child repent, know that the Lord has placed a mortal angel in his or her, or her path, the bishop, another church leader, or a ministering brother or sister. If you keep fasting and praying, if you do not set a timetable or a deadline for God, and if you trust that he is stretching forth his hand to help, then sooner or later, you'll find God touching the heart of your child when your child chooses to listen. This is because Christ is joy. Christ is hope. He is the promise of good things to come. So, trust Jesus with your child. 
for he is the strength of every parent and of every child. Once Alma had experienced joy in Christ, Alma the Younger lived with that joy. And how did he maintain such, good, such joy even though difficulty and trials, or even through difficulty and trials? From that time, Alma states that even until now, I have labored without ceasing to bring souls unto Christ, that I might bring them to taste of the exceeding joy of which I have tasted, or I did taste, and the Lord doth give me exceeding great joy in the fruit of my labors, and I have been supported under trials and troubles of every kind. Joy in Christ for Alma, when he, exercise, when he began to exercise faith in Christ and cried for mercy. Then Alma exercised faith in Jesus Christ by laboring to help those taste of the same joy. These continual labors produced great joy in Alma, even in trial and troubles of every kind. You see, the Lord loves effort, and effort focused in him brings blessing. Even severe trials can be swallowed up in the joy of Christ. Another group in the Book of Mormon who made Christ or big Jesus, Jesus Christ and his gospel the focus of their lives and found joy at those who founded the city Hillam, a place where they could raise their children and enjoy the free exercise of religion. These righteous people living good lives were enslaved by marauding, by marauding group and stripped of the fundamental rights to exercise religion. Sometimes bad things do happen to good people. The Lord seared feet to chasten his people, yea, he tried their patience and their feet. Nevertheless, whosoever put his trust in the Lord, the same shall be lifted up at the last day. Yea, and this was the same with these people. The Lord did, how did the Lord, how did these people endure through their trials and suffering? By focusing on Christ and his gospel. Their troubles did not define them, rather each of them turned to God, likely defining themselves as a child of God, a child of the covenant, and a disciple of Jesus Christ. As you remember, they were, uh, as you remember, as they remembered who they were and called upon God, they received peace, strength, and ultimately joy in Christ. Alma and his people did not pour out their heart or did pour out their hearts to God, and he knew the thoughts and the intents of their hearts. And it came to pass that the voice of the Lord came to them in the affliction, saying, Lift up your heads and be of good cheer, for I know of the covenant which I have made unto you, or ye have made unto me, and I will covenant with my people and deliver them out of bondage. In response, the Lord did ease the burdens upon the shoulders, ye, the Lord did strengthen them, and they did bear up their burdens with ease. And he did submit, and they did submit cheerfully and with patience in all the will of the Lord. Note that these saints led their troubles, suffering, and trials to be swallowed up in the joy of Christ. Then in due time, he showed Alma the way for their escape, and Alma, a prophet of God, led them. As we focus on Christ and follow his prophet, we will be led to Christ and the joy of his gospel. President Nelson has taught, joy is powerful and focusing on, on joy brings God's power into our lives. As in all things, Jesus Christ is our ultimate exemplar, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. My mother recently passed away. It was a shock. I love my mother and did not plan on losing her young. But through her passion, my family and I have experienced sorrow and joy. I know because of him, she's not dead. She lives, 
And I know because of Christ, the priesthood, that the priesthood keys that have been restored to the prophet Joseph Smith, I will be with her again. The sorrow of losing my mom has been swallowed up in the joy of Christ. I am learning that to think celestial and let God, and let God prevail includes focusing on the joy available in Christ. He lovingly invites, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen.